So what is imposter syndrome? Back in 1978, two researchers, Clance and Eames, did a research study and they coined the term the imposter phenomenon. It's become known as the imposter syndrome, even though syndrome technically means it should be clinically diagnosable and it's not, but it's a lot easier to say. And I've spent the last 20 years specialising in this and I describe it as that secret fear of being found out as not good enough or a fraud, despite outside world evidence that we're doing really well. It tends to affect people who are aiming high. Some of the most confident people you will know in your life will be lying awake at three o'clock in the morning, struggling with the secret fear that they might be found out. And this is the secret source with imposter syndrome. What if they find me out? Now, when I work with clients on this in my training courses, on keynotes or one-to-one, -one, I describe the imposter syndrome gap as being the gap between who you see yourself as being and who you think you need to be to do or achieve something. And because we don't always have the option to stay on one side, we build what I call the bridge of coping strategies to go over the gap. All those things we do to succeed despite imposter syndrome and its ugly friends. Sometimes that bridge of coping strategies feels nice and strong, made of steel, regularly maintained. Sometimes it feels like a rickety rope bridge in the Amazon. And the problem with this approach is as soon as we have a stretch objective or a comfort zone stretch, and that gap between who we see ourselves as being and who we think we need to be widens, the bridge is no longer big enough. And we have to desperately build a bigger bridge of coping strategies or we self-sabotage to avoid having to go over the bridge. Self-sabotage, that's stuff like not speaking up with your ideas in meetings, not returning that call until it's slightly too late, pointing out your mistakes and failures when you're praised, not going for opportunities to shine. There are so many ways imposter syndrome can cause us to self-sabotage. And there's a deeper definition I use as well. Imposter syndrome is the secret fear of others judging us the way we're judging ourselves. Because when you're running imposter syndrome, you're beating yourself up. You're constantly second guessing how people might respond to what you do, what they might be thinking. We read things into a tone of voice that really wasn't meant to be there. And we do everything we can to stay safe, even if that means we then fail to fulfill our potential. So if you think you might be running imposter syndrome, and I talk about running it rather than having it, because it's not something you can wrap up in a box, you think you might be running it, I have a free quiz that you can do. Link is here, okay? Go and take the quiz. It's based on my two landmark international research studies. So this isn't just like a pop psychology kind of back of cigarette packet quiz. This is based on science. It will give you an idea as to what your imposter syndrome score is, how you might be getting in your own way, which of the three hidden drivers needs to be the biggest priority for you. And as my gift, you get a 12 page PDF personalized action plan based on your responses. So go and take the quiz now. And if you wanna learn more about imposter syndrome, make sure you subscribe to my channel and you hit the little bell so you get notified each time I publish a new how-to or insight or case study about imposter syndrome and how do you set yourself free from it.